Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm gonna show you how to install a GE dishwasher, specifically model number GDT605PSMSS. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is um, point out to you the things that you're gonna look for that come with the dishwasher. Um, this way, you can have everything ready to go. So we have, you're gonna get a bag that has um, your installation, a few components, um, of which you got your owner's manual in here and, uh, and um, an installation guide, installation instructions. So that's gonna be in here. Then you also have the drain hose extension that will also will need to be added you got um, the cover for your electrical box which will demonstrate during installation you'll see where this goes and then you also got a bag of screws and the covers for the side mount that go on the inside i'll point those out to you that's in this baggie here a couple brackets for installation there's two brackets and it looks like in here there's also some uh, like also some pieces for configuring the inside of your dishwasher so you can check your manual out for that and then there's also a zip tie and depending on your model you may get some some extras but um oh and there's also you also have this installation or insul like an additional um insulation that comes with it as well and i'll show you where that goes and you also have these side um, trim pieces that come with the unit. So all this comes with the unit. Um, in addition to what comes with the unit, what you're also going to need, or I recommend, is a dishwasher kit. What's included in the dishwasher kit is going to be your supply line. So a steel braided hose like this. It's a 3 8 inch hose. You're also going to have um, some wire nuts. You will need three for this install. So you have three wire nuts. You have the brass elbow that connects your supply line. And um, also a, um, depending on your electrical connection, if yours is hardwired, you won't need this, but um, the in some installation kits will include the power cord. As a matter of fact, if you look in our description on this video, um, there's a link for my, like just a, a good dishwasher kit that includes all these items. It'll have like the line, the everything you'll need for this installation. But for our install, we will need the power cord. Um, and other than that, just then your, your standard tools, which you'll see as I do the installation video, what I use. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is start off with preparing the new dishwasher. And um, if you haven't already uh, removed your old dishwasher, check out one of my other videos. It actually demonstrates how to remove your old dishwasher. But if you have, awesome, you're ready to get your new unit installed. And as I said, we're gonna, we're gonna start off by preparing this dishwasher. The best way to prepare your dishwasher is to lay it, lay, lay it on its backside. Don't put it upside down. Don't put it on its side. Don't put it on its top. Just lay it on its backside. That's the best way. Um, to really have access to everything that you need. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna move these real quick. All right, here we go. So we're gonna lay this on its back. All right, so you should be able to see here. First thing, in order to get to what you're gonna need, um, what you can do is start off by removing the kick plate. Comes attached, just pop it off. Just, you could use a nut driver or um, it's also a Phillips head. So pop it off either with a Phillips screwdriver or a quarter inch nut driver. I got a quarter inch nut driver I'm using. I prefer that. So pop that off. There, your kick plate's removed. Set that aside. We're gonna use that. We won't need that till the very end. And um, as I mentioned, um, we're, we have a, a direct plug-in for our installation for this video. So you're going to do one of two things. At this point, either if you also have a power cord or I mean a, an outlet to plug your dishwasher in, 
go ahead and uh, locate your power cord and let's get that installed. Go ahead and pop that on. If you don't um, have a power cord or yours is a hardwired direct, then of course you can wait on installing this unless you got an extra long um, line. If you got a long line, it's awesome. You could possibly do it like this, like where, if, you know, depending on how long your electrical line is, you may be able to. Typically, they're not that long. So you're probably going to have to do the electrical connection when the unit is actually, uh, after you've already prepared your water and your drain hose, you slide it in, then you feed your electrical into this box right here. So you're going to locate this box or this, this bracket here, and essentially you're going to feed your electrical um, line in through here, and then you're going to do this, you're going to perform the same wiring as I'm showing you here. So I'm going to go ahead and slide my power cord in, clips into place. Um, this particular kit includes that connection already on there. And then you have three wires um, and you can just um, connect them, of course, color coordinated. There's going to be the green ground and then you got your hot um, and your neutral white line. So there's obviously you can see you can just line those up. So let's go ahead and pop that on. What I like to do is just put the tips as close together as possible and um, lined up as you can see and then use the wire nut to to make a nice and tight connection so once I get there so use that to twist so don't twist the wires just use the wire nut tug on it make sure it's good so there's that let's go ahead and pop this one on all right and same thing just make sure double check double check that you are um, you have a tight connection on these if it's loose with any rattling or like shaking of the dishwasher or anything like that when it's running if you have a loose connection it'll definitely create a short for you so you do want to make sure that you do have a nice and tight connection here so boom these are all on that's it now um what you could do at this point is also locate this electrical cover that I showed you that comes with the unit and go ahead and um, and, and, and cover the box because you won't need access here again. Um, I'm confident in what I'm doing here. Of course, you can wait till the very end um, to do that just to make sure that you know you don't have an, any issue with, um, with your connection. So typically you'd want to probably wait till the end. But as I said, I'm going to take my chance here. Let's go ahead and you're going to, you got, um, I'm gonna open the bag of the hardware that came with the unit so you can see what we're looking at. You got the two, these are two covers that are used for the side mount on the inside of the frame. So I'll show you where those go. Then you got these two screws right here that are for the mounting brackets. And then these screws are actually to secure the dishwasher itself. And this screw right here is to cover the, uh, this electrical box right now. So we're gonna, you're gonna locate the black screw in this mix and go ahead and pop this cover on. So um, this is gonna go just like this. You have, you see the cutout on this box right here? It's gonna go, it's, it's designed so that you're all your, just make sure all your lines are, just try to tuck them as much as you could. And then the cutout on the box is to cover this, this connection right here, this plug-in right here that you see. So that's gonna go right over that and then tuck those away and, and it lines up. So then as you can see right here on this side is the placement for the screw. So let's go ahead and secure that. covers on and um, the next thing we're going to do in preparing the dishwasher is we have two more things to, to, to do at this point one is to connect the drain hose extension and the other is to connect our supply line so I'm going to go ahead and start with the supply line once again with the dishwasher kit you're going to get that brass fitting and that's what I need now is that brass elbow that um, 
that in order to connect this steel braided hose as a 3 8 connection, you need this, um, this brass fitting that get, then attaches right here. So just be sure when you install this, obviously your lines are going to run back to the back. So, and, um, and you just want to make sure you have the, the washer inside and um, just what I do is just you tighten it by hand but be careful in this step because if you cross thread this it's a it's like a it's like a plastic type material so you could easily cross thread it so do it by hand just try to get it to attach you see how it's almost wanting to thread on sideways so just be extra careful in this step because if you ruin that you're, you're definitely gonna um, you know risk a possible leak so once it starts to catch and it's even nice and straight then you can then you know go to the very end so it's threading looks like I'm let me just get a nice connection first yeah once so that connects once you get it to thread it like it'll catch there we go got it so you just gotta like i said you gotta take your time there you see it just threads on nice and tight go as much as you could by hand to the and keep keeping the um the the other end pointing towards the back so that the line has a nice smooth run so i got it tight all the way by hand um then what i'll do is give it a little extra with uh, some pliers so just hold this end so that when you try to tighten it, it doesn't move on you. Hold it here because all you really want is this part to move. They actually, if you, when you look at the fitting closely, this part actually is separate from this part. So um, then they're kind of held together with the washer that's inside. Um, so we can go here. I'm holding it and just, as you can see, it doesn't require much. You don't want to over tighten it. Um, you want to tighten it enough, of course, because this, this is the pressurized water. So tight it, tighten it and just feel for it to be nice and tight. Like usually you don't need too much of a, of a turn there. And as I mentioned, just keep it moving to the back. Then at this point, you could also add your steel braided line. And that's again, it's a three eighths line. And you're going to basically just start it here. Just do the same thing. Get it started by hand as much as you could. Some people like to ask about Teflon. Do you use Teflon tape? Oh, my bracket's coming undone here. Let's push that back into place. Um, I personally don't use Teflon on these types of fittings, this line in particular, because it's got a built-in washer. So if it makes you feel better to use Teflon, I, I just, I'm not sure if it's, um, you know, necessarily needed. Some, some manuals will tell you you need Teflon tape um, because it just depends on the kind of um, lines you're using. So if you were connecting like uh, copper or something like that it's, it's just totally different this steel braided line has a built-in washer so it creates the seal that's needed um, to prevent a leak and same thing on this this is a hard plastic you can add Teflon I just you know again you got to be careful with the Teflon because if you don't put it on act properly it can create a leak for you as well um, but um, so once that's tightened same thing here go here as much as, as much as you can by hand give it a, an extra turn or so and um, and then that's ready to go now the final step in this and in, in preparing the dishwasher is going to be um, attaching your your drain hose extension so as you can see this is our pump down here this is the drain hose itself that's built into the unit and then it wraps around right right here to the side let me turn that so you can see it so as you can see this is all connected here and then it wraps around to right here so you, this tape was holding it, you move that out of the way. And, um, and what you're gonna do is locate the drain hose extension that comes with the unit. And that's this one right here. And this end with the tape, as you see right here, this end is actually the end that's gonna get connected under your under your uh, under your sink or to your to the, your drain connection itself, either your garbage disposal disposal or your PVC piping, um, but this is the part where you're going to want to attach the hose in through in, in, into here, and it also comes with um, this this clamp. So pop that on here, get it out of the way, and then secure. Just you're going to push. You see, you got the the ridges here, and then you got this connect this space right here where your clamp is going to go. It actually shows you where it's going to go um, right it actually put right there so your clamp is going to go up here to make sure it's tight 
or, or holds in place. So we're gonna secure this. Just give it, get it. This is tight, so push it in as much as you could. This out of the way. All right. So it, it'll stop. It's gonna stop obviously so you can just go in as much as you could and then once that's there Then you're gonna just take this clamp and slide it over to where the it's marked on the actual on the actual uh, connection here. So move that move it over. It's gonna go right there, so Usually in this area, it's going to catch. It's got grooves, so you can connect your hair. Of course, if you're not certain, um, your model, this this particular install is demonstrating this exact, G, you know, obviously this GE dishwasher. However, it's going to be pretty, pretty, pretty much the same for a lot of GE dishwashers. Um, so it should be, you should be seeing similarities if you're not installing this exact model. Get that on there. All right, cool. And that's, that's on. Actually, I'm going to leave it here. Cause I had a better, it felt tight. All right, boom. All right, excellent. So that's on there now. And uh, so we have our, the other thing I'm gonna point out while we're here is you got four adjustable feet um, on the bottom of this model. More than likely if you took it out of the box, this was probably secured to the um, GE in, in particular secures their dishwasher to a crate. So once you took this out of the box, these feet were actually securing the crate um, or the dishwasher to the crate. So you remove these feet, these, these feet need to be reinstalled so that you have, um, they're not just packing, packing feet. They're the feet that you'll need to be able to adjust the unit. So I'm gonna pop one of these off so you can see what it's gonna look like. But as I said, if you took yours out of the box, it's going to be created. You're going to pull these feet out and then, you know, attach them back so that you can use them to adjust and level the level the dishwasher when the time comes. What I like to do is because it's going to it's easy. It's, it's not easy to access or get to. I like to just make sure I have, you know, enough. Enough of them so I can reach for them, um, thread it in and I'm going to go ahead and put this back on and then we'll be ready to stand the dishwasher up. All right, so to go through a checkpoint um, at this point, our electrical connection is accounted for. Our supply line is, the fitting is connected and the, and the, uh, and the line itself is connected and then we have our drain hose connection. So we're ready to um, get this unit on its feet. All right, let's go up. So this, uh, this is insulation, of course, I, it goes without said, but it, it's got it all over it, telling you not to remove the insulation blanket. You wanna keep that on. Um, so leave that there. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna point out a couple of things before sliding this unit in place. One of the things you wanna keep in mind, once the dishwasher slid back, you gotta, at some point, you're gonna need to mount the dishwasher. So it's easier to show you at this point. So you're also prepared and not having to pull the unit back out. So go ahead and locate your mounting brackets, which are these guys right here and the two screws that secure them. And it's the screws that come inside, kind of got a, like, a, like a gold um, tint to them. Um, and you're gonna need to determine at this point if you're going to need a side mount installation or an under counter installation. Uh, we have granite countertops here, so I don't have anything to secure the unit to and I don't have any holes drilled into my granite. There's no bracket. In your case, you might have like a bracket that's added so you could secure it from the top, not a problem. Um, however, <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead and do a side mount installation, but I am gonna go ahead and show you how to install this bracket if you're, if you're securing yours to the bottom of your counter. It's pretty simple. Um, you're gonna wanna grab, again, these screws are a quarter inch <clears throat> as well. So, 
I'm gonna try to give you a, a good visual. So this is gonna go, if you're doing a, a, a top installation, uh, under counter, this bracket's gonna go simply just like right here in the front. Look at the back of this bracket. It's got a hole there. <clears throat> so, and then if you look at your dishwasher itself, we got a uh, spot for the bracket here and here. So there's two places. This simply goes here on the front and then <clears throat> you take the screw and secure it from the back side into the bracket. All right, so that's basically that's what's gonna hold that. You just secure it, it catches, and that will hold the bracket here. You're gonna do that on both sides if you're doing uh, an under counter <clears throat> installation. So it's simple, it goes on the front side and run the screws. But of course, I'm not doing that, so I'm not gonna secure it here. I'm also gonna show you, if you're, also, if you're doing a side mount installation like us, I'm gonna show you how to do that. And that is right here. So take a look here. I wanna show you on the inside of the, the frame of the dishwasher right along here you see there's a hole like a pre cut hole here and then there's one on the other side right here that's what these plastic pieces that were in that bag of hardware these two plastic pieces they're actually to cover that hole after you secure the unit so we're not going to put it on right now but i'm just uh, letting you know what these are for they're to cover these holes so if you do an under counter installation um, then of course you can cover those holes. You don't want to have them, you know, you could just cover them up so that, you know, they're, they're just, they, they fill those holes there. Now, um, to install the bracket on the side, <clears throat> it's pretty simple as well. You can reference the owner's manual for this part just so that you have a, um, uh, uh, a, like a clearer picture of how to put it on. But I'll point it out to you just so you can see. Same, same concept. It's got, you got where the, the hole coming through the side right here, you're going to put this on, on, on this side of here and then the, run the screw right through the back side of the bracket right here. And that's how you secure it to the side. And then once you're ready to secure the unit to the, to the cabinet, you're going to run your screw right through the inside of the dishwasher through the frame through this part. And then of course, into the cabinet. Um, so before you do that, what you're going to want to do is you see these these are, this is kind of gives you the option to do pre-cutting so you're gonna you're gonna have to determine um depending on your counters and things of that nature as to what what option or is going to be best for yours when you do a side mount ultimately you can cut this right here um to secure it however don't do that right away because it's very possible that you have like you know to the side of your dishwasher may be hollow if it's hollow or you don't have a cabinet that this is going to secure to then then the other option you have is to secure this here but then you could still rather than cutting this you know here you can cut it up here and possibly do a side mount where you could secure to the outer lip of of the cabinet so you definitely have some different options for securing the unit you just got to make the you know the the, the, the decision you got to figure out what's going to be um what, what your setup calls for um, so as I said, before going and cutting these, just make sure you determine, okay, this is going to work for me. I got cabinets or I'm going to, you know, I'm going to need to secure it to the side of the cabinet, but not through the inside of the dishwasher. All right. So just keep that in mind. I'm not going to go ahead and secure that, but I just wanted to demonstrate what you're going to want to do. So get your, get your brackets installed here and, um, I'm going to set those aside for now, but once you have, once you've determined um, how you're going to be securing your unit, whether it be the top to the bottom, and then we know that everything else is set up, it's, you can now start uh, preparing to, to um, installing the dishwasher into the space. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start with pointing out a couple things to keep in mind for, for or just your setup is going to defer slightly. As you can see right here, I actually have a little bit of a an open space between my dishwasher and the cabinet under the sink so i'm going to fish my drain hose you, you can have the option depending on how tight your space is you may need to run your drain hose through the bottom um if if your dishwasher and your the cabinet like to the sink is is, is right next to each other you may not have the luxury like to be able to go up through the top even though the dishwasher drain hose has to be elevated, you may have to actually run it through the bottom first and then elevate it under the sink. But in my case, I have plenty of room and clearance to where I'm not gonna pinch the line by running it through the top. So I can run my drain hose right here, through here to the top. Then um, you have, of course, you can, if you if you're, um, have a, a plug-in connection that's under the sink, you're gonna fish your um, power cord 
through a hole that you can you know pre-drill on at the bottom back in the back probably about a but to fish the two lines you could use like a one and a half inch hole or one and a quarter inch hole um, but that's essentially what I'm going to do now I'm going to go ahead and run my lines through and uh, start to slide the dishwasher into place get that done get it a little closer take a peek at what's going on there so we're going to run these lines right through here let me uh Move this closer here so I can get this going. All right. So let me um, get that a little bit closer here. I'm actually going to go ahead and just move that, but we'll fish your lines in the sink. And Okay, so I actually I went ahead and plugged in. You can you can plug. You're gonna more than likely your outlet's gonna be under the sink. But I went ahead and plugged in the dishwasher right on the back side there, just to uh, your. This is for demonstrating purposes. But I went ahead and plugged it in. As you saw after I did that, um, it actually powered on. So we got power. All right. Now, before I'm gonna make sure I don't have extra slack in the lines. I'm gonna pull them through. through it. So I got my lines partially ran up. So now I'm gonna go ahead and work on getting this dishwasher slid into place. So you can take a look here. You have uh, you have the insulation blanket. What you want to try to do when before sliding it back is try to get this to hug the dishwasher as much as possible and have it. Um, towards the rear part of the, the tub. This way it doesn't end up getting pushed forward and getting caught up in your, either your spring or the, the door hinge. So what I do as I, as I slide it in, try to hold it back. I'm gonna slide that into place there and then work on it um, side to side. So you push in a little, just to keep it nice and even on both sides. And as you're sliding it, in the place, go ahead and pull on the lines under the sink so that you don't get them um, bunched up, of course. I have a unit, so I got the line pulled through, and then I have the drain. So looks like I'm good, they're nice and tight. You can keep pushing into place. Perfect, okay. So one of the things I'm gonna point out now is if you didn't have, um, if you don't have a power cord installation or you're doing a direct plug-in, this is the time that you can go ahead and um, before you get too far, go ahead and connect your electric um, at this point and, um, and uh, using the same tech, what I, the, the steps that I showed you on how to connect your power cord, but you're gonna essentially do it from underneath. Uh, unfortunately, you know, there's, it's, you know, a tough space but you'll be able to get to it right here through the bottom you're gonna run your electric line into that space and then use the wire nuts um, to go ahead and make your connections there now um, we got that done what I'll go ahead and do just to test before I before you spend time uh, leveling the unit and securing it what you want to do is go ahead and um, I like to go ahead and connect my water my water supply and turn the water on this way I can just make sure that we don't have any leaks and and everything is, is is good as far as that goes so go ahead and get your line moved over to the connection so, uh, i'm sure at this point if you're doing your installation you're aware of course your your supply line is going to connect to your hot water supply typically it's going to be the valve on your left side and if you've previously moved your old dishwasher um, you probably would have noticed where it was coming from. Um, as you can see, it's right here on my left. And I'm going to go ahead and secure this. Um, with the steel braided hose, same thing. Do it by hand as much as you can. And once you see that it's um, tightened all the way by hand as much as you could, then use um, either a pair, uh, like a, a, a wrench or, or a 5 8 uh, wrench as well. It could work for you. 
to make it a little easier. So we'll go ahead and get that tightened. All right, that's nice and tight. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my water on now. All right, water is on. As you can see, it's parallel. The, 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 the valve is parallel to the line. And I'm gonna go ahead and check under the dishwasher, check my connections there, just uh, and make sure that I don't have any kind of drips or leaks before we proceed. So you're going to take a look at the connection that you made underneath for the supply line and the fitting. It's nice and dry, so we're good to go. So now you know your water's on, leave it on at this point. This way, if there's going to be any type of issue, you can discover it before you end up putting the kick plate on at the end. So we'll leave that on. And as we're here, the other thing you, you, uh, you're going to now, the other thing you're going to do is go ahead and connect your drain hose. And we have a garbage disposal. Um, that we're going to connect the, the, the discharge line to and it's going to connect get connected to this stem um, right here on the garbage disposal if you recently had your garbage disposal um, installed or you just replaced it what you definitely double check that um, that the there's a stopper that's located inside the stem right here in scenarios where like you know someone you know if you don't have a dishwasher but you want to make sure just push in a screwdriver through and make sure that the stopper has already been previously removed um, but of course if you had a working dishwasher prior then it's probably removed but one of the most common things I see um, is that people will have replaced is repl are replacing their dishwasher thinking it's broken when in fact they replaced their garbage disposal and whoever replaced it or you know they maybe forgot or you know didn't realize that they need to remove the stopper that goes here so double check that first um, now if you ran, uh, if, and of course the other option you have is if you have the regular PVC piping, if you don't have a garbage disposal, you're gonna, you can, you'll be able to install this to the PVC pipe. Typically the nipple from the PVC pipe is much smaller than this. So in, on this drain um, connection, it actually has, um, uh, you, can, you can cut it down. So you can see it kind of has like little sections where for a larger connection, you would leave this, you wouldn't mess with it. For a smaller connection, you could possibly trim this down if you need to, if the stem isn't long enough, but if it's a long stem, ultimately you could still run this line as it is and then just make sure you secure the clamp where it's actually catching to a solid surface. You don't want this line to do this. So if the fitting goes here and you secure the clamp and you do this, you're going to have a leak. So you don't want it to do that. You want to make sure that wherever the stem is connected, um, it, it's, 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 it fills the surface. So um, we're going to go ahead and start. The other thing, before I do that, I want to point out, if you had to run your line through the bottom, not a problem. It is very important, though, however, that the, the drain hose ends up elevated higher than wherever it's going to drain. So if you run it through the bottom, you're going to want to feed it up towards the top of you know the cabinet and secure it either with a bracket or you know the zip tie it comes the, the actually part of the materials it comes with a zip tie you want to make sure that the the drain hose is elevated you don't want it drooping down so if you ran it through the bottom you don't want your line coming through the bottom right into into the drain because um, it, it'll it'll be a place for water to sit so essentially what you want to do is make sure it's elevated this way once the pump stops um, draining it can siphon any water that hasn't you know fully made it to the drain so in our case we'll go ahead and just um, pop this on here and uh, and I have you're gonna use a clamp to do that and we have this style clamp which they work great for this you just we're gonna run it over as you can see I got it tight and I'm gonna go ahead and secure this you could use either a nut driver or um, or a flathead screwdriver I just had one close so I'm gonna use this Make sure this is nice and tight. You can tighten it as much as it'll go. Boom, we're good and good to go. Now what you can do is just make sure you have a nice clean run with the drain hose. Anything excess um, that you don't need here, you can fish back um, uh, behind, behind, the, behind the dishwasher this way. As I said, it siphons in once it's done pumping. So I'm gonna go ahead and feed that the excess drain back underneath all right cool so there we got there you have it drain is connected and secured we have our line connected water's on 
And now the, the plumbing portion of this installation is, is, is done. The next thing you're going to do is, let's just, actually, you know what? I just realized, good thing I remembered at this point, we got these side trim pieces. So this actually, let's go ahead and get these on before we secure the unit. At any point you want to do it. These are, if you have a tight space, these are not always used. Um, uh, it just depends on your situation. So obviously you do want to install them if possible to give like you give you a nice clean built-in look. Some um, you might notice, you might see that if you try to put it on, um, it interferes or you know it just the the space your space might be too tight uh, for this to to work. But I'm going to go ahead and pop them on. It's pretty simple. You see, um, there's two of these. They're completely they're the same, and you just turn it. Um, to the side that it's going to go on it's going to go on just like this as you see how i'm holding it and you just secure it to the frame here on the side so it just these grooves we're just going to pop it on and it just pushes into place so there's um let me just make sure that it goes on Hold on a second Go to the other side. Let's see. Let's see if this goes here. Well, actually, and uh, got it going. Put it on backwards. It's gonna go. So it just pushes right into the frame there. Once you have it on there, um, just make sure it's the, down at the bottom. You also got a hinge that is overlapping, so it might, it might be a little bit tight, but it'll go over. It'll go. I mean, there's enough room to get it on there. All right, both sides. Good. Okay. <clears throat> so, of course, you want to do that um, before before. Uh, going too far at this point because once you secure the unit you're not gonna be able to have access to that side lip so just now you push it back into place so as i said it's actually a perfect example this is even our space here is super tight so it makes it a little bit hard um, for it to secure so um you can um obviously for demonstration purposes that's what these are for i'm gonna pull them off just because it looks like my space was cut really precise so i don't need to use them um i'm not going to use them you can pull them off but because as you can see i'm kind of actually there's a little bit of room it looks like i could put one not the other but either way um i just wanted to show point out what those are for so you can use yours if you want to fill in a gap your space might be a little bit larger now the next thing that we're going to do is uh level the unit as you can see i have a big space um between the dishwasher and the counter so i don't i like to get essentially as close as i can usually i only have between the dishwasher and um at the top of the dishwasher and the counter uh, to me you know a clean look is under a quarter inch you know having it nice and close um as long as you know depending on how you're securing yours those of course so if you are doing an under counter installation you might have to uh, account for a little bit more space um but i'm going to go ahead and adjust that so the best way for me to raise this unit is to go ahead and uh, lean it to the front like this with one hand that kind of gets me able to access the rear feet and then adjust the rear feet so that I could raise the dishwasher. So I'm gonna do that now. All right, cool. So I got the feet down for the, on the rear side. Now, as you can see, it's leaning to the front. So what I could do is just do the same with the front feet and you may have to do this step multiple times because you got you can only do it little by little there's only you know there's only so much room that you have down there to work so it may take you a couple of tries to do it but i dropped this foot let's do this one too boom all right so as you can see i still need to 
adjust my rear feet a little bit more because now it's uh, I'm leaning to the back. So I'm gonna do it one more time. Let's get this get this back up. All right. So get that down a little bit more. Let's see how much closer we are. Perfect. All right. Cool. So. I'm gonna put these front feet back down. It looks like we should be about spot on. All right, so we're good now. All right, so we are perfect here. Looks good. Let me grab a level just to make sure that um not leaning to the front. All right, cool. Perfect. So we're right. Good, we're perfectly um, good there. Now let's look at our, make sure that side to side, we're also good. And I usually, I have a couple of reference points that I like to, you know, to determine that I'm nice and uh, leveled. Um, as you can see, we've got the bubble there in the center, but I usually like to look at my, my lip, you know, on across the top, just make sure it's even. And then look, of course, the space um, on the side um, for between uh, on either side just to make sure you you know you got your unit centered um, but one thing you do want to keep in mind you want your dishwasher to be level with the floor so you know your counter may be warped and dipping so don't try to make your dishwasher perfect necessarily with your counter because you, you just don't know your situation but if it's if you know your, your, your counter is perfect with no with no um, uh, you know any kind of warp there or you know uh, like if it's not if it's just uh, uh, even then you don't have to uh, um, you can use that as a as a as a reference as well but as I said um, just try to go based off the floor that's going to be your best um, best way to confirm that it's level property so we're good there now um, the next step is going to be you could at this point we know the unit of course we've, we've verified that we don't have any leaks um, we've confirmed that there's there's power and um and obviously uh at this point we can go ahead before securing the unit and before um uh, installing the kick plate and the final steps go ahead and uh test your unit just make sure that you are in good shape there fully remove all your packaging from inside there's gonna be some packaging remove all your packaging and what you're gonna do um this is actually designed to where it, it can be this, you know, a lot of these models that have the controls at the, at the top are not designed to, to be um, used with the door closed. So ultimately you open your dishwasher, um, you can choose your cycles. If you want, you know, choose whatever cycle you want right here. You got select cycle on this model, choose whatever cycle you want. And then any options you may want. Obviously right now we're just going to do a quick test. So we'll do normal. And then all you do, once you choose your options and cycles, you hit the start button. After you hit the start button, you got a few seconds to close the door and it will go ahead and start to wash. Um, if you don't do it uh, right away, you could see that the, it starts flashing um, because you, you, know, you just gotta choose your cycle options. After you hit start, you wanna close the door right away. Um, otherwise it'll start flashing. If you, the other option, you have, say you, you changed your mind, you don't wanna run it, you just hold down the start button and that'll actually cancel as well. So that'll cancel the, the, the cycle itself. Hold it down, as you can see right here, it says hold for three seconds. So hold it down to cancel. Um, I'm not gonna go ahead and run it, but um, that's that part. Now, the other thing you can do here is, uh, um, once, so once you've tested and verified that your unit is working, go ahead and secure your unit. Either you're gonna secure it with the, the final screws that are remaining in the installation packet are these screws. And these are to mount the unit. So either we're going to secure it, you're going to secure it, of course, right th to the back, it's into the bottom of your counter, or through the side here, as I showed you before. So use these screws to do so. If if you're going through the side and you need something longer, of course, you may have to get some longer screws of your own. These are these are a lot of times used when you're doing an under counter 
um, installation. But don't be surprised if you need something a little longer, but depending on you know the the space that you may have, your cabinets. Once you've secured your unit, then you can go ahead and install these covers, these plastic covers, to go right um, over these holes right here. As I saw, as I showed you, these covers here. That's where these guys go. You just push into place. Um, now, once that's done, so the dishwasher is at this point, we'll assume secured, tested. Um, the final step is going to be to do to go ahead and install um, the kick plate and then also this additional insulation that comes with the unit. It's pretty easy. Um, it comes with some instructions inside of it as well. Um, it's going to go, it's got, it's kind of got the cutout for the electric right here on this, um, on this right side. So once you, once you pop it out of the bag, you'll be able to see that you're just going to slide this just like this into place right, right through here. And as I mentioned, this ends up your electric that's right here ends up right above this part. So you push that there. And of course, um, now your final step is, uh, is installing your kick plate. Just the same way as you took it off. It has uh, this, what's nice about this particular kick plate is it's got a guide so that you can adjust it. Or, or so that it, depending on how, how high you had to raise, um, you know, how, how much you had to raise the dishwasher, you could, you can, you know, it'll guide up this, you know, you could, you can make the adjustment necessary. But once you line it up, you'll see that the screws, the, the placement for these screws will line, will line within that guide. Um, and let's go ahead and get that kick plate installed. Pop that on. So it's, it's secured in the same exact spot um, that they, they, the, it was removed from. So there's not a different space, place, place you moved it. So you might want to need to put a hand on the, on the actual kick plate. So once you tighten the, the screws, it doesn't want to ride up the track there. Maybe the other side. And All right, and now our kick plate is installed, our dishwasher is installed, it's ready for use. I really hope this video helps. Um, definitely feel free to comment below any questions, uh, like, like and subscribe for more.